Hi guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube. My name is Daniel Rosal. Recently, I uh, put the keyword search term MDisk into YouTube because since I began uploading a series of videos regarding everything to do with the MDisk, I've been receiving quite a steady stream of emails from people from around the world uh, interested in M-Discs and optical archive and doing optical archiving. So I actually inadvertently discovered in the process of doing this that apparently I seem to be the person on YouTube talking about M-Discs. I've uh, accidentally wound up in that circumstance, but I own it because I do love the M-Disc. And I've covered a lot of various aspects of M-Disc archiving and I wanted to talk about one very very specific uh, question in this video which is why would you back up onto mdisk backup or archive instead of just using the cloud like haven't you heard of the cloud right because when most people think about backup and archiving today someplace they're going to put their data whether we're talking about you know photographic data video data, whatever you need to archive to keep safe. And without trying to get too sidetracked on this video, it is important to understand the difference between backup and archiving. And really the M-Disc is an archival medium, right? An archive is a copy of data that you don't expect to need and you're not going to need to restore from it. So, you know, when we're talking about M-Disc archiving, here's a spindle of blank verbatim M-Discs. May as well do the whole gear show and tell just quickly because there's not that much to show really. We, I have my M-Disc writer from LG. Uh, it got, got that for about a hundred bucks on uh, amazon.com. And finally, dual cases for my uh, on-site and for my off-site, I'm currently filling up this binder and it's just full of these M-Discs. So this is what the M-Disc archiving process looks like. There's nothing very fancy about it. Uh, I label my discs with a marker just the month of the backup, YouTube 0223, YouTube uh, 0123, that kind of stuff. And these are these, uh, the YouTube videos from my main channel is what I'm archiving. So archiving onto MDisk, we're not talking about backup. We're not talking, it's not a suitable medium because it's very slow to read from if you need, and it's a very, um, it's a relatively small medium, right? The MDisk exists in 25, 50 and 100 gigabyte variants. By today's standard of data, none of those sizes are very big. So if you're a you know typical business consumer, because most uh, most private consumers don't think about stuff like backup, and you want a backup medium that's quick to write to, quick to restore from, and can handle business levels of scale, MDisk is the wrong medium 100%. So it's very, very specifically useful for archiving, right? If 25 gigabytes, um, per disc because these are the most uh, easy to buy ones or easy to source ones if that sounds about right for your data needs I think they can be a great medium but it still begs the question why wouldn't you just use the cloud now a while back on my main YouTube channel which is called Daniel Rosal and I'm trying I set this one up to try to separate my YouTube footprint a bit more logically but I did an interview with the guy who actually invented the MDisc really interesting computer scientist by the name of uh, Barry Lund and he said something that really really connected with me in terms of why I like using MDisc and that's that cloud you know the cloud is fantastic I think you'd be very hard pressed to find someone today anywhere on the internet using Planet who doesn't use cloud computing services on a daily basis, whether we're talking about Gmail, whether we're talking about Google Drive, or whether you're using a Microsoft product, whatever the case may be, the cloud is extremely useful for creating the day-to-day -day data that characterizes our lives. However, if you have valuable data that you want to protect for you know, potentially after your demise, not to get too morbid on it, but uh, Barry did mention that, and that's actually a big reason I'm interested in. Now, you might be thinking, well, you know, why would a relatively healthy 34-year-old be thinking about these things? But to me, as a creator, the content I create, I want that to stay around, right? Whether I have management over it or someone else, you know, the next generation has management over it, I want that to be somewhere I can physically control. Now, the problem with cloud services, and this is something to paraphrase what Barry said, 
cloud service providers, whether we're talking about Google or Microsoft or Backblaze or Amazon S3 or any cloud provider, doesn't really have a philanthropic interest in maintaining your data. They're going to maintain the data in the cloud so long as you're paying a subscription free and a lot of services like uh, Google, a lot of cloud services have these kind of terms and conditions whereby if you don't log in for a period of time, perhaps two years, there's an inactivity detection system and your data will be deleted. So my point is, is this, why would you want to archive to the cloud, to MDisk, and not to the cloud because the cloud is quite brittle. It's enormously useful day to day, but if you're interested in strategically maintaining your own data for the long term, the cloud is a third party over which you really have no control and which doesn't really have your best interest at heart. So long as you're a paying customer, it's gonna keep your data on their servers, but that's a big caveat. So if you've created something very valuable for you or for your family, whether we're talking about perhaps wedding photos, the YouTube videos I create, photos of your loved ones. Um, that to me is a very valid reason why you'd want to take control over your data. Now you could, now another question is, well, what about NAS? NAS, uh, very common in the data storage and preservation world, and it's a much more scalable solution to data storage. For those who haven't heard of it, it's basically a server, a home server, Who's, which is optimized for storing data. Synology is about the best known of their providers. And I would say, well, NASs are wonderful. I have an NAS in my house, but I actually only use it as intermediate storage. I put stuff firstly onto my NAS and then I archive it onto MDisk. Now, the reason I do that, well, NASs are very, very secure. That's the first thing to say about them in terms of uh, storage, right? Because they have something called RAID, which means that it's kind of immune from hardware failure. If one of the hard drives fails, you're not gonna lose your data, which is absolutely the case if you're storing data cold on something like a hard drive or a SDD. Hard drives or SDDs, neither are optimized for cold storage. You're gonna have something called data rot. So NASs are actually great and they would actually be my first choice before MDisk. And in fact, I store some of my data on my NAS and some of my data on my on the MDisk. The reason I like the MDisk is because for it's for me, the type of data I'm committing on to MDisk is archival. I don't expect to ever really need it, but I want to have it. If the you know the videos I upload to YouTube that I put effort into producing, it would be crazy for me not to keep the originals of my video. I don't think any videographer would recommend doing that, just uploading to YouTube and deleting the files. So because I want to have my own copy, I want to keep two copies, one on my on-site location and one on an off-site location because that's always the best practice in backup and archive. You want to have one off-site, one on-site in case something physically happens to your on-site location. So for me to have that um, on an MDisk is just a better medium because it doesn't fill up my NAS, right? Now, it's that's very much a stylistic choice. You could say, well, I just, I'm happy to keep upgrading my NAS storage as my data pool becomes bigger. Personally, I like the approach of just being able to buy more MDisks and put them in spindles and that's the way that my storage pool expands. They don't take up very much space at all. I can fit about 100 uh, disks in that little folder and I could probably fit it a push 20 or 30 of those binders just under the couch that's right next to me here. So it's actually quite a space efficient uh, storage media and unlike an NES, it doesn't require any power to run. It's a fully cold storage solution. Now the actual value of MDisk over stuff like an NES, I would say actually comes more in the off-site location. I mentioned that it's always best practice, whether you're looking at backup or whether you're looking at archive, to have an off-site location for your data because your house could get hit by a hurricane, God forbid, or robbed or whatever. And if you've built up your data pool on your house, that might all go to waste. So the idea is that you have two physically, geographically separate locations to mitigate or hedge against that risk. Now, the beauty of MDisk here is that unlike putting your stuff into a S3 bucket, you can literally just fill up, write up your disks. So what I do personally is once a month, I write my M disks for storage here, and I simply duplicate them, create a second copy, and move them off-site about once a month. Now, what, can, what does off-site mean? 
it can literally mean your office. If you're lucky enough to own a second property, it can be your second property. If you're lucky enough to own a boat, you could even store your M discs on your yacht, right? Or you could store them in your friend's house or you could post them to like a backup buddy. I've thought about that idea before. If it's someone you really trust with being able to read your data, it doesn't matter. There's no rules to this. The only rule is that it should be somewhere geographically distinct from your main location. And even that, there's no rule. Some people will say, well, it should be in another country. Some people would say it should be in another uh, part of the country that wouldn't be affected by an earthquake. If you go down the rabbit hole of thinking about risk, you can really go down that rabbit hole. So I would just say, don't overthink it, put it in a separate location. What I'd like to sort of, how I'd like to sum up this video is I don't think the clouds and MDISC are in opposition at all. I think they serve very different purposes. I think the cloud is amazing for day-to-day -day data storage. For many people, for backup purposes especially, I think it's a great fit. For archiving of small amounts of personal data, I prefer using the MDISC over the cloud because it gives me total control. I'm not dependent on any technology company to hold my data in the event it gets ransomware i get locked out i'm not here to look after my own data there's something nice knowing that physically i have two copies of my own data one sitting in my house the other sitting uh, in whoever else i've trusted and if you really want to keep it in you know keep it personal that could be a family member for instance uh in their house or really whatever you choose um i hope that's uh, given some sort of uh feeling or insight into uh why despite the huge utility of cloud storage i believe personally that optical archiving and specifically mdisc archiving is still relevant uh, if you have questions about this or thoughts about the MDisc, feel free to drop me an email or a comment here on YouTube and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching the video and good luck with your own data archiving projects.